19. Uh, first up, uh, uh, item arising from where we just were, item uh, item B32. Um, and the gap would, would say, uh, if I can read it from the, from the screen, the council approves uh, uh, $2,067,834 uh, increase of ongoing funding for 2019 operating expenses related to labor relations or employee negotiations, correct? Uh, need someone to move that item. Councillor Veith seconded that item. Councillor Bodley, any conversation? Uh, seeing none, since we would have had it. Uh, all those in favor? That's carried. So, Council, as you can uh, see, uh, uh, Mr. Witzel just uh, flagged that item as uh, as approved, and due to the handy dandy, fancy pantsy uh, Excel spreadsheet that he's got set up there, that automatically moved the number up into the top line, which we'll see throughout the day as we approve various items. Uh, there is a minus 1.5 percent coming soon from assessment growth. Uh, uh, just in case anybody uh, was having an overt reaction to that very first item that we dealt with. Uh, and, and Brad will keep us going through the day, and finance staff will flag to me if they need a moment. Uh, so we may pause from time to time uh, just so uh, the folks that are minuting all of this can keep up and make sure they've minuted what we actually meant to do uh, correctly. So that may require some slowdown from time to time. And uh, after a period, we'll take, we'll take breaks as we need them, um, because I want everybody to... Uh, uh, Make sure their health and wellness is well considered as we move throughout the day. Noticing we've all grabbed beverages and that has an impact. Uh, so that takes us into uh, into the operating budgets, uh, tax base, starting with base budget requests. Uh, first up is section 4.4, .4, base budget requests, uh, funding amounts. Are there any items uh, from these 16 that any councillor wishes to deal with separately or discuss separately? Councillor Freeman, which one? For, for my ease, it would be easy. I'm happy. It's easier for me if we could just approve everything that's like a return to the budget. So all of the, so and I, because I just don't know, know the numbers fast enough. I have to turn the pages. <laughs> okay. So, so I, I will go slowly when I ask that question. Section four point four is sub items one yeah. through sixteen, uh, and those are all funding items, which are money into uh, the budget. Yes, that's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. So are there any items among those 16 that council would wish to deal with separately or discuss separately? I am seeing none, so I'll take a mover of 4.4. That's Mayor Jaworski seconded by, Councillor Bodley. Uh, in the discussion, all those in favor? That's carried. Now Brad will toggle, 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 toggle. Uh, next up is... Uh, Section 4.5, base budget requests. Uh, these are efficiency uh, items. Uh, they're one through 10. Uh, are there any of those that any member of council wishes to discuss uh, separately? I have seen no one, uh, so I will look for a mover. Moved by Councillor Veith, seconded by Councillor Vasek. In your discussion, all those in favor? That's carried. And that takes us to uh, 5.6 uh, base budget requests committed. Uh, and those committed items are those that uh, either have contracts associated with them or policy or previous approvals associated with them. Are there any of these that any councillor wishes to discuss? Which, uh, which one, Councillor Freeman? Um, item B28. Okay. Uh, any other items for uh, for council on uh, on these? Uh, I'll look for. Um, I, I know B twenty eight is looked to be uh, done separately, but based on the uh, uh, on the report we received from the uh, twenty seventeen approval from parking, B twenty seven and B twenty eight came together uh, under the same report. So we'll have a conversation together. Yeah. So I, I've got those two items. We'll start with we'll start there rather than try to dance below and then come back up top. Um, so uh, I'd like to get them on the, on the floor before we have uh, conversations. So uh, move those two items by Mayor Jaworski, seconded by uh, Councillor uh, uh, Bonagora. Uh, and we'll look to conversation uh, on those items. Councillor Freeman, you had a comment? Through you, um, Chair Henry. So I, I, um, I'm not okay with um, the transfer of the 270,000 
um, for parking recovery for the two hours free parking. So on on that, I recognize that there needs to be. I, I I heard staff and I've heard that comment that there's no free parking. I I do appreciate that, um, but. This, this, there, I feel like there needs to be a balance between the fact that parking is an enterprise unit and that, um, and that this number really equates to a subsidy of uptown businesses, right? So you have this relationship of this number to the economic development, you have relationship to parking, and um, I, I would, I would like to see that number somewhere. Somewhere less than that, so that so that if we stick mainly to parking and say that this is an enterprise unit, they have a lot of tools by which to um, acquire a revenue source or change their revenue sources, fees, those kinds of things associated with paid parking, and that and that it shouldn't come directly off the tax base, the the two hundred seventy thousand, and so you know I recognize that these two reports go together. I recognize that. You know, one number relates to another, um, but I, I, I'm not okay with the magnitude of the 270,000. So, in an effort to try to move this forward and just to make this simple, um, you know, would council consider that number half that amount? I think council would probably desire further information on that suggestion before uh, commenting, and I'm looking where that further information might come from. Mr. Witzel? Yep, through um, Chair Henry to, to Councillor Freeman. Um, so just around the, the cost component, so the 270000 in uh, cost recovery is related to the direct cost of, of operating the, the no-charge parking or the two-hour free parking. Um, so it doesn't take into account any opportunity loss that the parking enterprise um, has in terms of, of lost revenue opportunity. So that's the direct operating cost around winter maintenance, insurance, property taxes, stuff of that nature. Around um, parking as an enterprise, there's really only two revenue tools that parking has currently, and that's permit paid parking, um, which uh, the rates are going up on average of 3% per year. Um, if we were to um, look to increase that above 3% to make up for this, um, they would be significantly higher than 3% um, without taking into consideration that the permit holders aren't really the ones that are benefiting um, from the, the no charge parking. The only other revenue opportunity is, is the hourly paid parking itself. Currently there is some small revenue being generated on some paid hourly lots as well as an opportunity to generate revenue after the two hour free through Honk Mobile which has been very successful to date, but we're talking in the terms of, of 30,000 uh, net profit per year. So unless we were gonna revisit the no charge parking concept, um, this is the staff recommendation in terms of how to recoup those direct costs. I think the uh, Honk Mobile revenue, uh, the uh, portion of it is included under the enterprise funding uh, section. So that's part of the model uh, that, uh, that you've baked in, which will adjust over time. Uh, Councillor Freeman asked a question of, uh, of, of, of councillors for entertaining it. Did you have an amend? Did you want to adjust the question to ask before I go to look to see if there's a response from council? Okay. We'll, we'll so, start there then. So my, my other question is, what ha where does the money go for payment in lieu for parking, for one thing, in Uptown? And, um, and you know, there, the... Like, I didn't really want to delve into the meat and potatoes of the model, right? But if we're charging, if we're charging for every single spot in the uptown as being two hours free, I don't think that's fair either because those spots aren't all available to people all the time because we've issued parking permits on them for five out of seven days of the week. So I, like, I don't really want to get down to that level of, Minutia. Um, this, when I asked before, I was told that staff allocates this number across every spot that we have in the uptown, and I don't think that's right. Yeah. So through uh, Chair Henry to Councilor Freeman, so just a point of clarity: the two hundred and seventy thousand is the direct cost only on the no charge parking spaces, which is about eight hundred um, in in uptown. Um, so it's not all um, parking, it's only the no charge parking spaces. And then just to clarify on the cash in lieu, um, when we collect cash in lieu 
um, that's not when they aren't providing parking that is going into a section within the parking reserve there's only been one cash and loo um, collection to date for 37,500 that would be considered one-time collection that would help us potentially expand parking and build more parking um, but that that's been limited collection to date through through the cash and loo program so that that's an it's a capital expense that we're collecting it for, not an operating expense. The, the reason for cash in lieu is to build parking, not to manage existing parking. Just to clarify, Councilor Freeman. I'm just really struggling with there being 800 spots that are available for two hours. That has to include the city lots after five. Like that, that like if, and if it includes the lots on Father David Bauer Drive, like that's ridiculous. Nobody's parking there and shopping uptown. So, like, I, that's just a shocking number to me. Okay, so I'll, I'll take Ms. Tepman and then I'll go around the horn. Through you, Chair Henry, there are that many uh, no charge parking spots in Uptown Waterloo. They include temporary lot A and temporary lot B on the corners of Regina and Bridgeport. The two hour no charge parking spaces in the station lot two hour no charge parking spaces behind City Hall, as well as approximately the 500 that are in the Waterloo Town Square lots combined, as well as the no charge parking spaces in our museum lot on the corner of Urban Father David Bauer Drive. Okay, so Councillor Freeman made a suggestion and is testing the, the appetite of Council. Without having made a motion, I'll look for the appetite of Council. Mayor Jaworski. I am <clears throat> I'm comfortable with the way, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, they're written today, 270. Councillor Bodley. Uh, through you, uh, through you, Chair Henry. Just as a for a point of clarification, uh, from my perspective, the way I look at uh, at, the, <coughs> at the request is uh, the idea of moving this two hundred seventy thousand dollars or any portion of it into the parking enterprise. Uh, there's a limited ability to recoup that and may well impact our decision making of being able to offer two hour free parking uptown. That's how I look at it, uh, which I think the idea of having two hour free parking uptown benefits uh, everybody in the community because everybody comes uptown to, to shop and we're trying to make the uptown Waterloo a, a more vibrant uh, uh, part of the community. And I guess I would like some feedback as to whether or not I'm reading that uh, correctly or or that if that's how you guys see it through um chair henry to councillor bodily that is correct that was the staff's position when we proposed that um we're we're basically looking at the, the provision of no charge parking as like a general taxable benefit it isn't as simplistic as thinking of like a library or recreation complex but basically um it's available to to all residents as well as visitors of uptown and really what we were struggling with is if we look to put that cost on the back of the permit holders then we get into some cross subsidy of of the permit rate uh, parking users paying for that um, service which they're they're not utilizing and that's where this um, proposals come from uh, thank you and uh, uh, I guess uh, that sort of uh, I agree with uh, mayor Dorsey that I am comfortable with where where the number is any other comments from members of council councilor Bonagor I, I'm comfortable with this spending this year, but I would like to point out that yes, well, especially given the fact that the LRT is not running yet, to be trying to change on the fly how we're paying for free parking and potentially restricting free parking uptown when we don't have viable alternatives to offer just yet, I think is potentially premature. Um, having said that, I think provision of parking and parking fees and parking use and municipal enforcement of our parking rules uptown is a discussion that perhaps Councillor Freeman, we might want to enter into going forward once we do have viable alternatives to offer people coming uptown. Councillor Vasek. Uh, through your Chair Henry, I, I also don't want to take up too much time, but I just want to echo that just to say that I also have an appetite for exploring um, how to reduce parking and reduce um, tax levies into parking uh, as a longer term strategy, recognizing that also in like Ward 5 in particular, it's tough to get uptown without a car. Um, so I don't know who's going uptown, who's not going uptown from sort of the outskirts of Ward 5, but it's a great place to be, um, but it's also not totally accessible. So as a longer term strategy, I'd definitely be be really interested in exploring uh, lowering that amount as well but also probably not today 
I get the sense we've now gone around the, uh, the horn. So we have a couple of alternatives. One, Councillor Freeman could move uh, a, a motion to the effect of what she was looking for, seek a seconder and have that vote. Or we could take the vote on the items here and just see it. Okay, that's what we'll do. Um, I, I wanted to make sure I honored the, the request. Into, uh, well, you put this motion on the floor. I'm happy to see it advanced. And if it fails, then I'll put a different motion on the floor. Yeah. To help, trying to help everybody navigate, and that's fair too. Uh, so, uh, so seeing that, the, the motion as printed is uh, on the agenda, B27 and B28. Uh, any further discussion on, on those items? Seeing that, I'll take the vote on those. All those in favor? Uh, all those opposed? Councillor Freeman. Uh, that carries. Um, and I think at the moment we'll just note uh, as a matter of sort of strategic priority interest uh, and broader conversation, uh, the comments from members of, of Council on on looking at you know, long-term views of the of, of the parking enterprise, uh, I think the uh, the studies of the utilization studies will be good and put into those as well. Uh, so I, I take that staff will write that back and we'll figure out when an appropriate time is to have those further conversations uh, as we go forward. Yeah, yeah, not not today, <laughs> right? But in in the next while. Um, so I get a sense that. You know, parking and accessibility in different ways of moving around is a strategic priority item and that uh, so you planning item and, and that that will help uh, help us navigate the future uh, so now we have uh, three four and five under here uh, are we okay moving those together uh, I'll take a mover moved by councillor Bonagora seconded by councillor bodily um, all those in favor that's carried so that takes us into the base budget requests recommended. Um, there are seven items here. Uh, Council wish to discuss any of these particular uh, particular items. I'll give you a moment. <coughs> Councilor Bonagora. Uh, I would like to discuss item B39. The Please. HRA. Yep. Any other item? Seeing none, can I get a mover for one, two, four, five, six, and seven? Councillor Freeman, seconded by Councillor Veith. So all except uh, item three. Uh, all those in favor? That's carried. Uh, and I take it, do you have a question to start this or a debate uh, point? Um, Either way, go ahead. Yeah, well, through, through you, um, Chair Henry. <laughs> I was just curious. Okay, it's, so um, this is to fund a human resources assistant and uh, when going through the budget documents, I've really tried to weigh up things that will benefit the city and the city processes and things that will benefit residents of the city more broadly. And when looking at this position, it's in an ideal world with limitless money, it would be great to approve everything. But this struck me as a good to have, not necessarily an urgently must have uh, in order to make the city better for citizens. So I um, just would like to raise this as a point to discuss with council whether this is something that we approve this year or do not. Uh, as input to that conversation, would you like a uh, staff comment on the rationale for the prioritization they have, given their, their positions on the menu list, positions not even there, and positions that made the budget? Sure. Uh, it's probably a good point of conversation so we have all the information. Uh, Ms. Patel? Through you, Chair Henry, um, I would like to add to what Councillor Bonacor just mentioned. Much though this position may not be contributing directly to the residents, it is really critical from our perspective um, that we provide adequate support to all our staff. They are the most important resource uh, in how we deliver our services to the residents. And so in getting this position in, in discussion with the Director of HR, and she can speak to it more eloquently than I can, um, right now, the HR consultants that we have on staff are spending a lot of time on administrative tasks, and they're not able to service the needs that we have internally, um, whether it is addressing um, grievances or complaints or looking at policy issues, providing training. There are significant gaps in what we're doing to support our own staff. And it is really critical that we start doing that and, and uh, improve what we're doing in that area. And ha adding this position, I'm going to try to duck on the other side of the mayor. Um, so it's important that we invest in that part of it 
And I do recognize a lot of corporate services. Services do not touch the front line, uh, do not touch the residents. But it is also critical, as I often say, that if your backbone isn't strong enough, the rest of your body will not be held up well. So corporate services does need to get these kind of infrastructure uh, positions so that we are able to provide the support to the frontline staff that are delivering the services. So I would also ask Susan to speak to what are the areas where she sees from an HR perspective are the gaps, which she's hoping that will the, the existing HR consultants will be able to now service once some of the more routine administrative tasks are taken away from them and this HR uh, assistant is able to come in. I'll look to the podium. Uh, go ahead, Ms. Yes. Rowley. Thank you, Keshwar, and through you, Councillor Henley, to Councillor Bonagar. Um, we do see this position as absolutely critical for uh, the City of Waterloo, and it is front-facing position. It's often the first person that members of the community do speak to when they call HR at the City of Waterloo. This position would be assisting with volunteer services um, and human resources. We've had an increase in um, postings year over year. I was looking uh, since 2010. Every year we have more uh, postings. Uh, so recruitment is heavier than it was even um, four years ago and ten years ago. Uh, this position would also be in, involved in the driver's abstracts, checking that, and that's uh, critical for our CVO, CVOR rating here at the city, keeping driver's files, training records, uh, training documents, checking abstracts um, every, every month for new employees for the first six months. So very heavy administratively, and as Keshwar said, um, we do uh, intend that this position would free up our HR generalists to participate in, um, you know, in, in higher level tasks, which is what uh, their responsibilities are. So again, we do see it as critical. Um, it is front facing. There is uh, touch points with the community. It's the first point of contact, uh, people calling in. And, um, you know, it's something that we critically need. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor uh, Bodley. Uh, through you, Chair Henry. Sorry, I just wanted to add to this because I had uh, inquired about this uh, uh, line item privately with uh, Ms. Patel. And uh, something that stuck with me from our conversation that maybe I'd, if we could get a public uh, acknowledgement of would be the fact that we have 148 retirees uh, forthcoming in the next couple of years. And so when it's when you speak to recruitment and retention, uh, the, that added pressure of the, the number of retirees being, uh, being an added pressure, if you could maybe speak to that. That's absolutely right. In a, in a recent report from KPMG, um, the City of Waterloo is trending higher than other municipalities in terms of employees that are eligible to retire with uh, unreduced pensions. So we already are seeing an uptake in, in people retiring. Um, we know that it, it's, it's, it's our reality in the next many years to come. That creates a lot of pressure with uh, recruitment, recruiting replacements, supporting that person as they end their employment here at the city, um, getting the new person onboarded and moving forward. So you're right, it has touch points with um, many areas of HR and this position would be helping with that substantially. And yeah. looking in the audience, uh, um, I will translate that to there are, City of Waterloo has a higher level of very experienced staff. Yes, that's as right. As the positive view rather than the negative view. And I see one of those very experienced staff uh, who will be a future budget pressure, uh, Mr. Heldman uh, in the back, uh, uh, putting up his thumb. This is what happens when you engage in a budget conversation, making making gestures. I was going to signal out about three people, but <laughs> I just have to focus on one. Um, uh, okay. Councillor Bonagor, is it? Satisfactory, or are we okay? So I will look for someone to move this item. Then, uh, Councillor Bodley, seconded by uh, Mayor Jaworski. Uh, any further conversation on this item? Seeing none. All those in favor? That's carried. Um, that takes us into operating impacts of capital and growth requests. I'm just updating the sheets I've opened in front of me. Um, so the first uh, item, 4.8, operating impacts of capital and growth committed. Uh, there are uh, two items here. Um, uh, Councillor Freeman moving both of those, uh, seconded by Councillor Vasek. Uh, any conversation about these items? Councillor Freeman? Uh, through Chair Henry, I just I wanted again to point out the the way that I really like the way that staff is funding this um, 
by starting to build um, a space in the operating budget to fund the East Side Library and like spreading out the impacts of that tax increase. And I, I got the very distinct impression at the Ontario Library Board uh, training that no other municipality has thought to do this. And um, I think this is a best practice well worth sharing um, more broadly with other municipalities that might be looking for ways to start funding a future library investment or even a rebuild, anything like that. Like, I, I really like the way that we're doing this. I know this is a brainchild of Cassie. Yeah, I was going to uh, send those vibes to, to, Ms., uh, to Ms. Pacey. And uh, I think that that's helpful because the total impact, uh, uh, the operating impact, is between 1.2 and 1.1 1. 1. 1 and 1.2 percent on the tax increase base. Taking that in any one year would be significant. But as the paper that uh, uh, this council sees from from the last council, spreading it, cash flowing it over a number of years, is the opportunity to spread some of that impact, not reduce it, but to spread it, uh, so that we can. Uh, uh, we can see some more room and, and smooth really those tax rate changes uh, to be able to accommodate that. And that's uh, that's certainly a helpful thing. Uh, so it's been moved and seconded. Any further conversation on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor? That's carried. Uh, that takes us to the uncontrollable operating impacts of capital and growth. Um, these are both previously approved capital items from the last uh, council. Um, look for a mover, moved by Councillor V, seconded by Councillor Freeman. Any conversation on either of those? Seeing none, all those in favor, that's carried. And again, that, that image of the capital, uh, of the central promenade at the, at the beginning that we got to spend some extra time on uh, uh, really attracted a lot of public interest. And I hope that uh, as we go through this balance of Council's term, we can do more really good projects uh, uh, in this way. Uh, next up, we have operating impacts of capital uh, and growth, uh, and these are recommended because they're identifying uh, things that are in this council term and not from a prior one. Um, any items council wants to deal with separately here? Seeing none, I'll look for a mover of uh, all three of them. Moved by Councillor Bodley, seconded by Councillor Freeman. Any conversation on any of these items? Uh, seeing none, uh, I'll, I'll just note as, a, as an observation, the Carnegie Library project will be a very significant one for uh, the Uptown Core and from a uh, heritage preservation uh, and an economic development perspective. Uh, I think we're all looking forward to, uh, to that. Uh, and on the last one, the in-house city utilities billing and general government overhead increase, as, as I think we can see from uh, the responses we've got from, from staff, where we've identified that there are um, incongruities in you know, who's paying for what on those. We're finding ways to phase these in so that they don't adversely affect either rate payers uh, or the property tax base. And this is one of those items that's uh, the first of a few years of phase in, if I recall correctly. So um, with that, uh, all those in favor? That's carried. And that takes us to 4.11, which is the service level changes. Uh, we have both... Uh, uh, a number of, uh, of increases, seven items there, and then some, some decreases. Uh, are there any of these specific items council, any member of council wishes to uh, discuss separately? One to seven here. Yeah, we can do a, we can do a comment. Go ahead. I don't, I don't want to pull this, but I do want to point to the transient site cleanup and just that that's a reality of our city now and that, um, like, I'm not even... It will be very interesting to track this to see if this meets the needs within our community because just walking the green spaces on one trail system in my ward one afternoon, we found a full-size couch, two full-size chairs, a variety of drug-related stuff uh, in one of our city culverts, which is used for stormwater management and flood protection. Um, we found uh, an entire campsite with, with things in it that are unsafe for people not to remove without having proper pr protective equipment uh, to remove it. 
and uh, and I think that like this is this is something that is a reflection of a very changing demographic in our region. Look for a mover of these uh, seven items, Councillor Freeman. Will you move the uh, yeah. group? Uh, seconded by Councillor Vasek. Uh, any other comments on on items in here? I mean, I, I think the transient site cleanup is is uh, is, is important to uh, to flag. Uh, it it, uh, it is a symptom of many larger problems, some of which are related to the co current opioid ep epidemic. Others are more broadly uh, emblematic of, uh, of, 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 of the differences in you know, inequity and, and income and challenges that, that people all across the region face, including here in, in Waterloo, which I think uh, it's important that all of us acknowledge and recognize is true. Um, uh, and and I'll, I'll let you go before I, I'll just finish my, my thought. I, I think uh, this would be uh, helpful maybe in the, in the future, Commissioner Dykstra, and this may be an in-camera item if, if this is uh, an area of, of update that may be helpful for council to get um, uh, to get some more information on. I, I, I have, it may be sensitive and maybe a, a, an in camera conversation, but I wanted to flag. I think that's something we could use more information. Not everybody's had uh, Councillor Freeman's uh, uh, experience on that, and uh, I'm sure we'd have more questions. Some of which may be uh, may engage matters that are that are in camera matters. Councillor Bonacore. On an unrelated note, I just wanted to also note that I'm very excited that we're um, implementing the neighborhood strategy. I think there are great things that are going to be coming from that. So I'm very excited to see that going forward. Absolutely. Okay. That's been moved, seconded, and commented on. Uh, all those in favor? That's carried. Uh, that takes us to 4.12, which is labeled uh, service level changes, uh, decrease. Uh, I note from... Uh, uh, 2019 that uh, uh, S10, uh, the Parks General Service Level uh, reductions aren't necessarily reductions, they're more true downs than they are uh, anything else, but they're, they're here nonetheless. Um, I know those were in response to comments that Councillor Bodley had raised. Uh, can we take those together? Uh, look for a mover. Uh, Councillor Bodley seconded by Councillor Beath. Uh, absolutely, Councillor Freeman. Through you, Chair Henry. Again, I, I know I raised this on the uh, <coughs> business plans, but I'd like to raise it again. I think we really need to look at a communication strategy on how it is that we're changing uh, the management of our green spaces um, because um, there's a disconnect in terms of expectations and how it is that we are planning to move ahead as a city in terms of managing those places and spaces. Yeah, I know I've occasionally got complaints from folks. It's like, you used to mow right down to the creek. It's like, that is not a good thing to be doing. And I am glad we stopped that. And it becomes an interesting conversation. Uh, Councillor Vasek. And then just to add to the communication strategy piece in terms of naturalization as well, and the leaf collection um, and leaf pickup, we might think also about ways to talk about what our opportunities for um, using leaves in, in more natural ways as well. Um, to, to complement the leaf collection program or, or long-term change. So in terms of communication, that might be a, a first step too about what leaf collection can do and what it can't do. Yeah, and I know we're gonna have a spot to say more about that later in the agenda. So we'll park that thought and uh, it's, uh, it's a good one. Um, so those have been moved, seconded and commented on. I don't think I've taken the vote there. All those in favor, that's carried. That takes us to reserve funded requests, temporary or one-time requests funded from reserves with no tax base impact. Um, and there's some things going on here in 4.13. Uh, I will take all of these individually because there are two of us that have conflicts on sub, sub items and I know Councillor Veith wants to discuss another one. Uh, so the first step will be B29 and I will wait a moment for uh, wards five and seven to find some space temporarily. So not seeing the councillors from Ward 5 and 7, uh, moved by Mayor Jaworski, seconded by Councillor Freeman. Uh, any discussion on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor? That's carried. And now I will wait to welcome them back.
Jim, you can come back. They found it. These youngins are slick, aren't they? They get, they get around, don't they, Jim? Lots of experience in that corner as well. Isn't that right, Mr. Bowman? Um, next up is, uh, uh, is item B30, uh, which is uh, uh, apparently we're going to host a board meeting. We won, so we spent 20 grand. Uh, Mayor Jaworski, seconded by Councillor Vieth. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor? That's carried. Uh, next up, uh, B, uh, B35. Um, this is the annual one-time funding request. Um, uh, do I, you can ask a question. You want to get it on the floor and then get the question on this? So we'll move by Councillor Freeman, seconded by Mayor Jaworski. Question, comment. Qu just a comment or question. I just, um, I, I would like to have invite uh, the Chamber of Commerce to come to Council in the near future to give us an update on this because, um, for instance, item number, the next item on the agenda here, SWR and Evolve Green, they come, they quite, quite, quite uh, I have a conflict on that, so. It's just a comment about them coming. <laughs> they come quite regularly to, to update us. Others, others, come. others come quite frequently to update us. Um, but we, we um, and I guess maybe I'm just extending the invitation to, so that we can find out where we are with physician recruitment, how, you know, how the, the chamber is doing with that. And um, yeah, and I guess they'll get their 20 grand before then. But anyway, thank you. I think we could uh, consider the motion uh, uh, to also include and that council request uh, chamber to uh, uh, to attend for an update on the program. I think the movers and seconders would be fine with said request. Councillor Freeman, um, just just as a comment, like physician recruitment and advocacy is one of the key links on their main page. So they do link to it and provide a lot of updates online. And I know they write about it in the Advocate probably at least once a year. Um, so I know that they're doing a lot on that front with a limited resource. So. I think it is money really well spent, but it is nice to um, give them an opportunity to share some good news. Yeah, I think it will be helpful to understand and raise in that conversation whether this ongoing one-time item is more ongoing than one time and whether in the three-year budget we should rectify that or continue to hold the, the one-year hammer over top of it uh, uh, to, to get Ian uh, to grace us with his presence. Mayor Jaworski. Yeah, uh, Mr. Anderson and I happened to have a meeting with uh, uh, Ian McLean, CEO, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, he actually brought this up. So this is something he'd be willing to tell the story on. It's a good story, great news story for uh, um, for the community, but also uh, new challenges emerging in the future. So uh, referring it to three-year budget probably isn't a bad idea. Yeah, so we'll, we'll take that under under advisement. I, I mean, I, I certainly note that I was uh, an individual in our community for a long period of time without a uh, family doctor, and then I with a family doctor who apparently keeps changing because they keep moving, but I keep getting one, which is which is very useful. And I know was not the case before the community started paying deep attention to uh, to these kinds of uh, kinds of matters. Um, so, moved, seconded, commented upon, slightly adjusted to ask for Ian. Um, all those in favor? That item carries. I'll vacate the chair for a moment. Item B36, supporting Sustainable Water Region Evolve Green Project. Moved by Councillor Freeman, seconded by Councillor everybody, um, <laughs> Councillor Bodley. Um, comments from anyone? Yep, yeah, please go ahead. And then Councillor Bonnevar. Um, I will say one of the exciting things about this is that it's a great story to start telling through the FCM climate change piece. Um, because we know about it here, but it's it we we think that people know about it elsewhere, and they don't. Right. And it it was it was not a government funded project, so it, it like per se like to build that multi tenanted building. So it's it's a it's a big deal. Wonderful, Councilor Bonagor, did you? Uh I'm just delighted to see that this is getting such a great start in our community, and I really look forward to seeing this kind of model go beyond Waterloo. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Uh, moved and seconded. All those in favor. To all of us, thank you.
Okay, that takes us to item B43, Commissioner's Special Projects. Uh, moved by Mayor Jaworski, seconded by Councillor Vasek. Uh, any questions or comments on this item? Councillor Bonagor? Um, perhaps I would like some clarification from staff on this, but um, it seems to me that this request, like part of it, the staff development could it not potentially be covered by staff training budgets and the other part which is delivering on strategic initiatives isn't that kind of a base expectation of city departments to deliver on this is that, does that like, is that the strategic plan initiatives that is that it's related to so i'm kind of curious as to why this request for additional funding is here when in theory the money's already there like to Mr. Anderson. Thanks, Chair Henry. Uh, maybe I can start it here for sure. So I, I just want to be clear we're on uh, item B43, Commissioner Special Projects Funding. And uh, that particular funding is an allocation that's available to all of the commissioners, all the area departments, essentially. And it's a model that we implemented several years ago now in really recognizing the budget's a snapshot in time. We don't know everything that will occur throughout the year. And so things, projects, uh, external pressures do prop up throughout the year uh, that do require some additional resources. And this just provides a little bit of latitude within the department level. And uh, so the, the total amount, as I said, is distributed between the departments. And then we report annually on the expenditures as well. So that's what that particular one is. Uh, I think this is, uh, council has a, community priority and contingency fund to deal with those kinds of, uh, of matters at that level. Uh, staff uh, do not. It's only the set budget that, uh, that we have. And so this uh, provides them with, uh, uh, with resources on a very expedited basis to be able to deal with that without coming into chambers for council to use, uh, uh, to use that reserve for, uh, which tends to be more, more limited. And it's allowed us to respond to um, certain timely, uh, timely initiatives because there's a, a source of funding beyond existing budgets to to deal with some of these one-time items. Yeah. Did I get this on the floor, Madam Clerk? Yes. Okay, so it has been moved and seconded already. Any further comments or questions on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor? All those opposed? Councillor Bonagor. Uh, next up, uh, S2, uh, Sports Hosting Office, uh, one-time funding and economic development. Uh, is that a mover or a question? Uh, moved by Councillor Freeman, seconded by uh, Councillor Bonagor. Uh, Councillor Freeman, go ahead. Uh, through you, Chair Henry. I would really like it, again, this is a communication piece where we, where we start to talk a little bit more about the work that this does because I think um, certainly in my ward, because one of the large venues, sport venues, that we do um, seek to bring in and attract uh, investment is Rim Park. And a, there are some folks that live in and around the neighborhood that don't realize that this is one of our premier investments. It's an enterprise unit. It's intended to go out, try to find business opportunities to keep that venue full. And we're, we're attracting some, some really large um, tournaments and uh, attention around this. And, and I also think more broadly that people might have an interest in going and watching some of this higher level play um, if they knew that it was happening. I know it's been a focus of the uh, Tourism Marketing Corporation as one of the many places that we're aiming for. Uh, to Absolutely, and, it's, and this, this sports hosting office is gonna integrate with that. Right, and and that, and I, and I think we don't talk a lot or enough about how it is that we do integrate with organizations like Tourism Waterloo. Okay, Mayor Jaworski, comment. Yeah, uh, this this is very important uh, from a standpoint of uh, the children's games, which we bid on a couple of years ago and lost to Niagara. One of the key reasons that. Uh, Niagara stood ahead of us was the cadence of previous uh, sports hosting that they have done uh, relative to, uh, and to to Waterloo Region. So notwithstanding the fact that we uh, have the volleyball and, and other initiatives, 
uh, certainly uh, this is something that would up our game and allow us to better compete. And, you know, from a tourism perspective, we don't have oceans, we don't have mountains, so let's have sports. <laughs> to host the minors before you get to host the majors, yes. Um, okay, uh, moved, seconded, and commented on. Uh, all those in favor? That's carried. So, Council, that takes us to 4.14. Uh, this is the... Uh, Menu, uh, uh, menu list and any other changes that had been uh, identified. Um, and I'll also pause to, to reflect on, on, on where we are on the, on the screen. Uh, we are about as we'd expect to, to be at, uh, at what staff had presented at, uh, at 1.9%. Uh, uh, but now there are uh, some opportunities for council to consider uh, more or less uh, as, as they so choose. So the process that uh, I propose for dealing with is slightly different than just a standard debate of going around the horseshoe and taking individual people who will move motions. I will look around the, uh, the table and see what items that are uh, you know, on the menu list or others people will want to discuss. That way people can get a sense of uh, what may be on the table. And then I'll go back to the first speaker I had who raised those, uh, uh, those items and then take them you know, in, in order as we normally would according to our procedure bylaw. But that way everybody has all the information of what might be coming before we start voting. And that's the best I can do to square the circle of not having a prearranged outcome, but actually doing it live. Um, so I'll look first to uh, Mayor Jaworski and then for anyone else that wants to raise items. Um, excuse me, M M10 and M7. So LED street lighting, director of strategic initiatives. And there's a couple more, but I'll leave those on the table for now. While we go around the horseshoe, you might, might come back to me. Other yeah. items to talk more about, Councillor Vasek? Uh, 5.3, uh, two, uh, it's a capital corporate branding review. Reference 402. We are in oh, the I'm operating budget menu area. No, it, it, uh, those are uh, capital budget requests. We'll get to those in due course. So this is... Items on the on that menu list M one through M whatever the last one is sixteen I think. Um, going around. Yes, I would Council like Bonagora. to discuss M eight, please. Okay. Uh, Councillor Bartley. Uh, I I would uh, echo M seven and eight actually, which is nice. Um, but also uh, M five would be something I'd like to chat about. Anyone else? <clears throat> I, I have uh, I have two. I think M M two was uh, uh, and worth uh, some discussion, and not on the uh, M list. I'll call it M seventeen. But it was uh, reported in the in the staff report back from Mr. Rapp. Uh, which was uh, the operating transfer to the local planning appeal tribunal, whether we could uh, get 32,000 more uh, out of that. Um, uh, and the answer apparently was yes, but it's worth discussing. So I'm calling it M17. So that's the, that's what's on the menu and we'll, uh, that's what's being ordered. We'll see what comes to the table. Uh, I'll, I'll look over at the, at the mayor uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to lead off. Okay, so M10, uh, LED street lighting, it's uh, overachieving, which is a great, great news for our citizens. And we don't know how much it's overachieving by, but I think we can uh, we see here on the table that it's at least 50,000 more. So I'd like to get that uh, on the table to pass those savings along into, those, into this current budget. So I assume you've moved it. I would move it. And I was look, would, would look to see if anyone would second uh, Councillor Councillor Veith. Any comment? Any further comments on the mayor's note? This feels like an uncontroversial one. Uh, seeing none, uh, all those in favor? That's everyone, that's carried. So item M7, uh, Director of Strategic Initiatives. Uh, this is something that uh, uh, I observed last time. This one's really important to uh, to this council, which is why I'd like to move it. 
um, uh, to, to us up here serving on council. Um, as we go through in the next few uh, weeks, uh, we'll be creating months, we'll be creating a new strategic plan. And uh, we're pretty uh, thinly stretched as a city. Um, the Director of Strategic Initiatives is a, is a, uh, uh, a role we used to have. Uh, we've been able to backfill it last term of council thanks to uh, Mr. Witzel, and uh, now we have uh, Anna Marie and um, Adam on it. And uh, we were able to create a government relations uh, program uh, worked on by uh, uh, that uh, the executive officer team. But uh, the reality is we're thinly stretched. And uh, I think I see, well, I, we all know that the uh, current uh, government of Ontario is making changes daily that are, um, are require some effort on our part. Uh, enormous effort on our part and uh, I think now is the time to uh, look at a, a strategic uh, um, a person reporting into the CEO who would be able to help this council out as well as help out uh, the CAO. I would note that there are other cities that use a, a chief of staff role on the political side to help out but I do believe that uh, we're better served by having this instilled into our um, our, our staffing allocation and have it work on the uh, under the CAO. So I'm sure we'll get more information, but it's been moved by the mayor to continue discussion. I'd look for a seconder, Councillor Bodily. Uh, Mr. Anderson, do you have any, uh, I know you had this during your presentation, but I think it would be helpful to have your comments and then I'll look to council. Thanks, Chair Henry. Uh, yes, as the mayor noted, uh, this was a position that actually was uh, active and funded within the or organization back in 2013. But through the budget cycles of 2016, if my memory is correct, we had to take those resources away to balance the budget. And there was a, there was a vacancy in the role at the time. So it was an opportune point. Um, but we did uh, initially start it uh, with the vision of really aligning our sustainability coordinator, the project management office, some of the strategic planning elements that uh, council and staff want to deliver on. And I think as the mayor noted, we are seeing uh, an accelerated amount of change coming out of the province. This would be a position that would be heavily engaged on that front. Uh, I think to, uh, if, if council supports the Lean Six Sigma program for the organization, I think this would be another example of the type of cultural change the person would help institute across our organization. So it definitely uh, was a menu item. It did not fit within the budget target that we had at 1.9%, but certainly uh, we do see merit, strong merit in the position. Yeah, I'll look to uh, Council, I have uh, Councillor uh, Bodily, then Councillor Freeman. Uh, through you, Chair Henry, and just, just my perspective on this. Uh, in addition to the amount of changes that we're seeing uh, at the provincial government level and the pressures that that's putting on it, I would just also state that we have uh, four new city councillors who may well have different strategic uh, uh, plan goals and initiatives that we would like to look into the next strategic plan and being able to actually implement those by having somebody in the CAO's office who is going to be able to focus on some of our priorities as we move forward into the, into the four-year strat plan discussion I think will be very important and uh, in particular uh, bringing it back to something that's uh, very important to me that I referenced uh, uh, during our discussions around strat plan being able to actually implement something around having uh, somebody focused on diversity for example uh, and having somebody in the CAO's office who can deal with these types of issues uh, I think that's really important and uh, when I look at this uh, menu item I see that if we do not advance it in this uh, year, it gets moved into the 20, uh, 2020 to 2022 discussion, and I would suggest that this is now the time where we should actually be implementing that person while we're developing the strategic, strategic plan as opposed to after we've developed the strategic plan. So that's my perspective on it. I just wanted to uh, echo the sentiments of Mayor Jaworski at the same time. Next, I have Councillor Freeman. Um, in discussion this item, I'd like to also understand how it relates to, like, for example, the senior planner at M14. So is that suggesting that the, that particular senior planner wasn't included or because we approved one senior planner? So I'm trying to understand, is this, is this number making reference to another? And I'll, no? It's, it's the same senior planner. I think the way staff structured the budget was to say, Here's some stuff, you, if you don't want to do, though we don't recommend it. So we, we really already 
added the okay. senior planner, this would take it away if council, I guess, got cold feet. Um, okay, so or anti planning feet okay, or some so kind of feet. That's no, but that's really helpful because I wanted to make sure I understood that. And then the the other thing is is like directly to this particular item. I think my challenge is, is that I really like how that position has been structured in the past where it builds added capacity within existing staff and allows a rotation through that. And so I, I'm not sure that I'm comfortable, fun well, I know that I, I just can't support funding this as a separate item because I would like to see that capacity building to continue to happen. And, you know, we did just reallocate another $125,000 to commissioner's budgets around around thinking a little differently on this kind of thing. And, you know, if I was going to bring in money on this side of the budget, which by the way, I'm not, I'm not convinced I'm willing to do, I'd, I'd be looking more strongly at something that's very outward facing, not inward facing, like strategic planning and outward facing, like, uh, like a neighborhood coordinator. So, you know, I, like for me, the, the, the strategic plan and building around strategic initiatives is something that honestly I do anticipate all departments are focused on. So, sorry, Mayor. I think, I, I think I'll add as a point of clarity and Mr. Anderson can um, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is a question I asked him a couple of months back. Uh, this is a role that would be in addition to the executive officer role that's currently held, um, not, not separate from. Uh, and in the three-year budget, the request that uh, we got on the menu at that time was for this position um, when we didn't have an executive officer role. And council said, we can fund the pay band of an executive officer, but not of the director of strategic initiatives. And we took the, uh, the room between the two. Uh, so this would be an additional, uh, an additional person at the director level and keeping the EO uh, in, in place, correct? Chair Henry, you've said it uh, very accurately, and indeed we do want to maintain the EO position, executive officer position of the CAO. It is a development opportunity. I think you heard earlier in our presentations this afternoon about the, the uh, success, succession rate within the organization and developing our people from within is part of the strategy with that position. Okay, so continuing conversation on M7, I have Councillor Vasek. I'm fully conflicted about this um, because I <laughs> probably of everyone here, I need the most help with being strategic. Um, but uh, something I think that, that we really, <laughs> you're I know it's true. Um, <clears throat> I, I think that the city um, perhaps needs even more and I, I don't see it as strategic um, exactly, but I think we need a director of diversity, inclusion and equity and I, I I, I believe that a director of strategic initiatives could help me figure out how that might uh, happen in the best way at the city to make the, the greatest impact for the most amount of citizens, but also staff. Um, but I'm constantly struck by how white we all are, by how white the KWAG event attendees were. Um, and, and, that, and KWAG is doing, Kitchener Waterloo Art Gallery is doing big, big work around um, pushing the envelope around diversity inclusion. And, and so my, my conflict comes from I guess worrying about whether this might take away from in the future a position for a director of, of um, diversity, equity, inclusion, or something along those lines, and 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 I believe that's that's really um, a priority for our community. So uh, I don't know where I stand on it at the moment, and I really see the value of it as well. So, but I just wanted to say that um, uh, what's missing from my point of view as well. Next, I have Councillor Bonagor. Um, really just a comment, I totally hear what Councillor Bodley and Mayor are saying, but I agree with Councillor Freeman on this, given that we've just added some capacity for, yeah, for HR, we've just added some capacity within commissioner's offices and the, you know, that, that added piece of building this into different departments along the way is not something to be overlooked. Um, I'll send it back to the mayor before I take a vote, which means I should speak now rather than later. Um, I, I think I appreciate where the mayor is coming from in terms of uh, in terms of value. I know Mr. Anderson could use additional bench strength to advance uh, additional uh, uh, additional priorities more more efficiently. But uh, uh, I, I think I, I struggle with the uh, 
with the level of funding that would be required uh, at, at this time uh, for the less tangible nature of, of the benefits there in relation to the other items that uh, may make more tangible benefit for uh, for citizens now uh, and would help us deal with the strategic priorities we know we have now uh, and and so I'm, I'm not uh, I'm not comfortable at this time with, with with that value and I would be happy to see some things come come better that have uh, could come later uh, in, in a subsequent budget cycle that has some thought around uh, what offsets and how we might pay for uh, uh, for achieving that and and, and and some more thought about how we would uh, how we would go forward and how it would how it would connect and how it would help save us uh, some some time as well that that could that could mitigate some of the costs associated with it um, I'll look to uh, mayor Jaworski uh, to uh, to wrap up the conversation and then we'll take a vote no absolutely there's um I think a good opportunity here for this uh, for this role. Um, certainly, uh, we work with our commissioners and with our directors on strategic initiatives, but uh, to to look at uh, larger initiatives that uh, we want to put on a table uh, this term of council, it just becomes very very difficult to be begin to take a back seat. And I would point out in the uh, menu items under key points. Uh, most recently, this position was identified by KPMG as part of the City of Waterloo Organizational Review Update October 2018 for reinstatement. So it's it's not just our own internal thinking that this is valuable. Um, others think it would be valuable as well. Um, but I do, I do see it as a, uh, it certainly is a large investment, but uh, it's a large investment at the highest level serving uh, council and CAO. So with that, uh, I think we've been around the horn. Councillor Vasek, question? Yeah, it's just a question. Um, if it is a, a high item, but it is a worthwhile um, endeavor as a city, does it have to be a director? Or are, are there opportunities to have it in a, like a lower paid position, um, but still a relevant role? I think I, I'll look to Mr. Anderson, but I say that's what we did three years ago to it. Um, Mr. Anderson. Through you, Chair, <coughs> Chair Henry, to Councillor Vasek. Yes, uh, when we did look at the position, we certainly saw it at the caliber of director level. There may be a little bit of refinement that's possible there, um, but it, in general, it would probably be close in the dollars and cents that are reflected there. I think that in, that's not just salary, that includes some other uh, auxiliary costs and benefits and so on. Um, and I would also note to council too, this of course isn't included in the budget at this time. I know that there's dialogue going around the chamber uh, with respect to Permanent funding for the position, another strategy that we have used in the past was conversion of the position, and uh, that's what activated the executive officer role within the organization. But one-time funding uh, is another scenario that council might want to consider and uh, to, to uh, demonstrate the benefits of the position and then consider it full-time in a future year. It's another strategy. So I think the direct answer to your question, Councillor Vasek, is no. It's a director level piece, and then he came back with uh, uh, with other funding options because we already have the the lower level version of that position. That's what we put back, uh, and I say lower level only on pay band, not in terms of people and value and all those kinds of things. Um, Ms. Mayor Jaworski, as mover, did uh, what Mr. Anderson say suggest anything to you or would you like me to take the vote and then well I think on? it's important that um, I, I think this is an important role and I think uh, it's probably uh, it would think it would be good to, to move forward on this and uh, with the vote as is we'll see where see where council lies so moved and seconded uh, uh, all those in favor that's two all those opposed that's uh, Councillor Freeman Councillor Bonagor Councillor Veith and uh, uh, Councillor Vasek. Sure. Uh, in, in general, on process at this point. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll put you on the list just on my. Uh... Perfect. Okay, so that's the mayor. Uh, that takes me to uh, Councillor Bonagor uh, discussing M8. Uh, through you, uh, Chair Henry. So this is the uh, increase cash grants for non-affiliated organizations. The request is for 
$100,000. I just want to clarify, is that request for $100,000 above what the program currently gets? Okay, then am I able to propose something a little different? Because I will have trouble supporting $100,000 on top of the roughly $68,000 that it got last year, but I would like to propose raising that budget to $100,000 in total. I don't know that's if that's something I'm allowed to do. That's certainly doable, and <laughs> we'll, we'll get a comment in the, in the moment that uh, uh, we'll need some help on what the uh, exact number is today So because you've asked for an increment. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll, if staff have that now, okay. I'll, I'll take it. Otherwise, I'll give you a moment. Um, well, this cash case needs to enable the matching funds. So it's two different things. That's perfect timing. <laughs> It works. We keep moving on. So through Chair Henry, just to confirm that the current budget is sixty-eight thousand. So an increase to one hundred would be thirty-two thousand increase, and we'll reflect that on item M eight for council's consideration. Yeah. So uh, Councillor Bonagora is moving M eight at thirty-two thousand uh, dollars, seconded by Councillor Veith. Uh, for any comment you have on that, Councillor Bonagora, and then I could go to Mr. Bowman for some color on what that would do, or vice versa. All I was going to do is ask for Mr. Bowman's feedback on the suggestion. <laughs> then I will go to the colorful uh, Mr. Bowman. <laughs> Through you, uh, Chair Henry, it would be very helpful. In the menu paper uh, you've got in front of you, you have some numbers, and I'll quote them again. In 2018, we had 53 applicants, and we had a total of 219,000 requests. And the previous year, we had um, 197,000 requests. So the additional dollars will definitely be helpful to the groups going forward. It still does not resolve the number of applicants and does not resolve the fact that in many cases the committee has to adjust the amount requested uh, down a little bit to meet the budget. So if somebody asks for $5,000, we might be only able to allocate 3800 based on their application. So the dollars would definitely be helpful, allow the committee to be more flexible and offer more um, of the needs going forward. Then that's open for a debate. Councillor uh, Bodley. Uh, through you, Chair Henry, maybe just uh, a, couple of, a couple of questions and clarification. So it says in 2018 the, the funding, budget funding was $68,105, but in 2017 it was $71,604. Is there any justification for how this historically, as a new councillor, has gone up and down throughout the years? Going Back a few years, we began to have what we call foundational grants for all our affiliated organizations. And as groups, we had, a, we had a, um, an envelope amount. And as those got received funding for that foundational grants, they were ongoing with through service agreements. Then as more affiliated groups came on board, we had to reduce that based on their request as a foundational grant. So they, it just fluctuated a little bit based on the number of people and asked, or the organization has to be affiliated with us. And, and so I know you're saying it would, it would help, but maybe, uh, I, I don't know if this is available and perhaps this should have been asked uh, earlier, but I'll ask it now anyways. What, what, are, what are some of the things that we were unable to fund last year that, uh, that even just some examples of uh, cash grant applications that came in that maybe just missed the cut or uh, can you give some explanation about the types of initiatives that these sort of uh, drive? Um, yeah, I don't want to name some names, but I just want to say that some of the groups, as I said before, would only get a certain amount, so we had to reduce that. Come on up, it's okay. Beth, Beth is part of the process. She knows better than I do. <laughs> um, so we, we tend to get about 50 to 60 applications. Um, as Jim mentioned, most of them will get, if they're eligible, they'll get a portion of what they've asked for. Um, so Jim was actually probably a bit generous in saying that if a group asked for 5,000, they'd get 38. It might be more like 2,000. 
Um, and so it's a, it's a wide range of things. So community events, um, it could be festivals, it could be uh, a cultural organization trying to share their culture with the community. Um, it could be sporting groups that want to put on a tournament or need um, new equipment to expand their program or trying to do a project where they um, try to introduce a sport or recreational activity to a new group of people. So it's really all over the place. That's the great thing about the program is that it's um, driven by the community. It's their ideas, their effort, and um, change they want to make in, in Waterloo. I'm, I'm just, I just sent council the link to the last cash grants report, uh, if folks are interested. So, sorry, through you, Chair Henry. Can, <laughs> it, I guess my question is, um, I, I, I'm fine with, uh, or, I, or I'm understanding of the idea of increasing the budget for cash grants, but is it, would we, maybe, I don't know if this is something you can speak to or not, but does the amount of funding that we have available determine the number of applications that we get. So for example, if we raise this to $200,000, for example, and met 90% of them, would we all of a sudden see $400,000 in requests because people would say, oh, there's, there's money there, let's go get it? For you, Councillor, I would, I would have to think not necessarily because there's certain criteria that the groups have to have in order to get into the cash grant uh, application process. If they don't fit the criteria, they're not eligible, and so their applications are removed or at least discussed by the committee going forward. Many of the groups are well aware of our um, limited budget, as is the committee itself. The committee is very uh, frugal in, in determining how they're going to spend that money on behalf of the city. And I think for the most part, I don't anticipate, now of course, with changes that are going on, was mentioned earlier, with our Ontario uh, governments and so forth, that some of the grants that are currently out there, and that may change, that may have an influx of different groups uh, asking for more money. That's a strong possibility, or it's out there. But I think for the most part, many of the groups are well aware of the criteria and well aware of the restrictions that we do have in our budget. So, yeah. I, I think it, it's fair to say that um, in doing any post hoc assessment of whether or not this attracted more things, it would be uh, difficult to tease out uh, provincial level changes that may drive some folks more yes. in our direction. But as I, as I look through uh, last set of applicants, I see a lot of round numbers on requests uh, near the top of the budget uh, or, or the top of the potential allocation that they could get. So I think many folks are already aware, um, ask for a as large a number you can get recognizing we'll give what we can. And, and so there's not a whole lot of room higher for some of these groups to uh, come forward, but that doesn't mean that folks won't think up a lot of projects or operating things that add to their requests. So it, it would be difficult post hoc to assess in the provincial yes. environment where things are changing. I think it's a fair assessment of what I heard. Mayor Jaworski? <clears throat> I think it's important for the council to look at this. So here we're not actually spending money. Here we're actually taking 100% of those $32,000 and putting them back into the community. So we're not actually spending money here. We are taking it but redistributing it through a process that already exists, through a process that exists with uh, the citizen uh, committee and um, you know the fact that it, we're really truing it up here. There's $200,000 in demand, 68000 in funding. We're truing it up part way to 100000 So this seems to be a, a very good thing. Um, but since Tennille voted against mine, I'm going to vote against hers. No, no I'm not. No, no, no I, it is a, it, it's, it's a good thing. We're, and it's unlike anything else that, uh, that we have here. Um, I would also note that the Community Cash Grants 2019, we've already done the intake for that, uh, correct? So we're not going to see a new influx just because of this announcement today. I think it's already taken place. No, cash Grants, through you, Chair Henry. Cash Grants has, has completed its, its um, conversation for 2019. And so we, we would go back if we felt it was necessary to allocate the funds if Council approved it. But uh, definitely we are seeing the similar trends going forward. So that was going to be my question. And I, I know you just answered it, but I, I want you to give it another shot because I'm not sure I 
what impact would this change at a 2019 level have on the cash grants recommendations that we're going to see back in a month's time versus uh, you know, 2020? I mean, did, did, I know you've said folks may look may look at it, but can you just summarize that again for me? Since yeah. so, so currently the cash grants deliberations have have finalized for the amount of money that we had in the budget for uh, up until today. When and and whatever direction council takes on behalf of the cash grants group, we will then, we've starred some groups and indicated that if we get additional funding, we would go back to those particular groups and offer them an offer or allocate some more funding to them to reflect more what they requested for this year. If there was any adjustments that had to be made, i.e. the recommendation by, by Council Bonagar, we would then take that in consideration again for the 2019 season. So we may have some one-time surplus that shows up uh, uh, arising from this if there's a gap between Correct, the two. that's correct. Okay. Uh, other comments on this uh, on this item? I'm not seeing any, so we'll take, uh, uh, unless you wanted to have a closing comment at this point, uh, we'll take uh, M8, uh, which I see staff have revised slightly to reflect the much more precise actual budget number that you can tell us an actual budget number because it's not round. Uh, in uh, in that case for cash grants. Um, all right, so all those in favor of that item? Uh, all those opposed? Uh, Councillor uh, Bodley. So that's carried. Uh, that was it for Councillor Bonagor's item. Next up are uh, Councillor uh, Bodley's uh, uh, items, I think of which there's one. <laughs> that uh, we haven't dealt with already, which is M5. I'll give you a moment. Uh, thank you, through you, Chair Henry. Um, <clears throat> there's, uh, I, I think probably the thing that sort of appeals uh, to me is the discussion around the potential of helping reduce our greenhouse gas emissions through performing heat storage from the refrigeration system, which is a uh, commentary inside of there. If this is something, and I guess I would like a comment as to how this uh, uh, person could uh, help us achieve those goals, uh, all of our sustainability goals, uh, I guess, uh, in that regard. Thank you. Um, so this position will help us. Um, last year, we have um, got the approval to implement green building uh, procedures uh, in the existing buildings. So this year, we are going to develop an assessment individually for each buildings to sort of identify what are the measures that we have to do in order to reduce the greenhouse. So since the since the buildings are all existing, we we cannot really place a blanket target for each building because their age and, and their use, everything is different. So we, we wanted to have uh, site-specific targets um, for each building so that we can reach the, achieve the um, goal that we have placed in the policy last year. So, so in order for us to do that, we will be getting assessment and doing that when um, each building with an external consultant. So this position will be the gatekeeper of, of our interest. So he will be the one looking after, or she will be the one looking after the um, interest of the city in determining the goals of each building targets. That answer your question, Councilor Bradley? Uh, thank you. And can you maybe speak to how many, if any, mechanical engineers we have working for the city right now? Presently, none. That is decidedly as small a number as that could be. Um, uh, look around to uh, Council for comments on those. I saw Councilor Bonagro's hand and then Councilor Freeman's hand. Uh, I just have one question. So, so given that um, we don't have any mechanical engineers on staff as yet, could 
So does this does that mean that there would be related savings in terms of no longer needing consultants to do this kind of work? And what what kind of ballpark savings are we looking at there? If that were to be the case. Can you repeat the last piece of the question? Sorry. So, so um, I suppose what I'm trying to get at is how much have we been spending on consultants to be doing this work? So oh. what would we be gaining by making this a staff position? So we have already allocated in our capital budget. Um, there are we have provided recommissioning uh, budget. There's roughly uh, sixty thousand going uh, annually, and um, each building assessment we also have um, building assessment roughly thirty thousand of uh, forty thousand going annually. These funds will help us to getting external help to uh, investigate the specific requirements of each building, but the decisions and the implementation and, and setting up budget will become in-house staff's expertise. So we will get the technical results, energy modeling, for instance, will have to be done by an external staff for us for each building. And uh, those results will will determine what is to be done and, and formulation of each piece in the building um, f in, in terms uh, uh, to transform that one into capital projects is going to be the responsibility of the uh, mechanical engineer. So annually we will be spending for implementation um, we don't know at this point, but this study that we are planning to take is going to determine which is roughly $60,000 for this year. And, and the implementation plan will come in the next three years budget, uh, as I mentioned in the previous discussion. So if I'm understanding this correctly, then we, we're not so much taking work that has been being done by consultants and translating that into a staff role, we're creating a staff role that will manage yeah. the work of yeah. consultants. This is just one component of this job function. We, we have been just talking about only one component of the, there are five component for this job function that that I, I would like to mention. Um, so this, this position will manage projects that are mainly mechanical engineering oriented, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, help enhance mechanical maintenance work for in-house staff by making distinction between system capacity deficiency versus deficiency due to deterioration or localized versus systemic issues bring in precision when writing technical specification on mechanical projects, develop policies and guidelines, i.e. green building control system, also help build business case for energy conservation grant applications, explore new opportunities for energy efficient and for revenue generation, i.e. which um, is a cap and trade initiative which is now ceased at this time, but that's a type of initiative that we, this position can bring in. So there are five distinct functions that we, we, we are going to develop through this position. Look over at uh, Commissioner Dexter. Yeah, through the uh, Chair Henry D. Councillor Boniger. Uh, there are a number of projects right now in the queue, uh, WMRC, uh, and then beyond that, some of the other implementations that we're looking at facilities where we could see savings through the contracted piece. Those are underway right now, but it's a move forward piece where we definitely, the uh, contracting out brought in house and there'll be savings. There's all, also another point on preventative maintenance where we would see savings. Uh, so all the systems in terms of uh, you know, the mechanical, electrical, uh, plumbing, uh, those that need HVAC, all those where we can have uh, someone planning preventative, what's the life cycle, when should we be doing all the filter belt changes, all those pieces to help out with this, to help us uh, uh, see an ROI on that position too. So that's another piece just to emphasize uh, to Council as well. 
those are certainly questions that that I had as well, right? It's like, what what's the is there a potential direct and immediate offset uh, to help deal with these, or are they more planning based? Uh, Councillor Freeman, um, to you, Chair Henry, I guess for me, I hear what you're saying. I appreciate the insight. Um, I, I'm just not in a position to support this right now. And the, the other thing is, it's kind of about shifting risk, right? Like, I'm just not sure how much we want to shift risk in-house to be making decisions around some of those pieces. And and I, like, I, I think that there's really, like, from what I've heard, there's some kind of high expectations around somebody having that that hands-on knowledge on how to do some of these things. And that's not always an engineer. And... Uh, um, so I, I don't know. I'm just yeah. not sure that I, yeah. I, well, I can't support it this year. Maybe, maybe you can help me to think differently next year. Uh, I've got, uh, I, I'm not sure that was a question. Uh, I'll go to Mayor Jaworski. Thank you. <clears throat> um, to, to, uh, to the chair, to, to Sunda. Uh, the, I recall this being on our list uh, before. How long has it been on our to-do list or our wish list for council, this role. How long have we had this this oh. uh, item on the list? For four years. For four years now. So, I think I think what I've what I've heard is um, certainly there's some some things that uh, we have limited capacity, like currently zero of of these people, and uh, and going to one. Uh, what I've heard, it'll pay dividends in the future. So there might be the opportunity for a true down in the future, not today, um, but certainly from a standpoint of getting things done, we you know we have uh, new buildings on on the way, but we also have uh, fifty year old HVAC technology on the main library in that. So we have uh, uh, certainly from a, a regret standpoint, um, you know I think I, I would say I regret not approving this uh, last term of council. Much, much like the strategic initiatives, but that's beside the point. Um, and I, I think that this is a, uh, a a good opportunity here that will pay dividends in the future for the city of Waterloo, going from zero to one. Uh, I'll look to Commissioner Dexter. Uh, through you, Chair Henry, to Councilor Bonigo, or further to your, if you're. Um, Considering a, a dollar value where we can offset some of the uh, the noted uh, 142 here, you know, I would propose that if you know, uh, approximately maybe 40,000, we could look in uh, giving council those uh, direct savings as an outcome to help move the you know the project uh, uh, the position along. That with uh, the work that's coming uh, out of this position, that where we see the preventative maintenance uh, ROI. Or, and some of the contract pieces that will be signed, uh, out, uh, sort of shopped out, that we could get that back in to reduce that level if that helps council with the, the dollar value and uh, some uh, um, accountability back to us to make sure we're leveraging that position to its fullest. So in terms of these $40,000 that you speak of, what would that look like if I were to facilitate that from the chair? I'll, uh, in terms of uh, process, uh, you know, looking at the uh, accountability for us, uh, we'd look at if there's utility savings, uh, parts, uh, efficiency, if those things within Sunday's uh, budget that we can look at. If uh, I'm going to look to other pieces, uh, people in finance, if there's... Uh, oh, yes. Sick. I'll bring forward like $40,000, but where that's coming from, that... Uh, we can sort out as staff. Okay, that's fair enough. I know what to do with that, uh, Sunda. Certainly, we can look into our utility bills that can go down easily by forty thousand. Yeah. So, I think what I'd hear, and this hasn't been moved yet by anybody. Is there an interest now that we've heard this of having it moved, and I can help you craft this motion? Um, so what I've heard is that this would move, um, you know, item M5 with those dollars figures uh, and that there would be, uh, we would then also identify a reduction of $40,000 to be uh, uh, found by staff and report back to council at a later date and we take those now. So it would be up 142, down 40 with some nebulous 
attachment. Does that make sense to finance staff, or would you just prefer to write in 102? I'll look to Ms. Reynolds. Uh, through you, Chair Henry. My preference, personally, would be if council approves the full cost of the position and discusses the rest of the M items, and then we see where we are. Um, and then we make a decision on what that gap is, because it might be bigger than 40. And it's not been identified from any location at this point. So I, I think it's more about, is this a priority position? And then, you know, if council is uncomfortable once they've discussed all the M's as to where it lands in terms of, you know, a tax increase, then perhaps that's where we identify what that gap looks like. And then you can provide direction back to staff to say, you know, look for 40 or 50 or whatever it might be. So you prefer, That's my suggestion. you prefer consolidated direction at the end of the day rather than various pieces throughout the day. Okay. So uh, I, I can facilitate that too. What, so I'd, I'd hear this just as moving the position, knowing that we did, we could come back and try to activate 40 if we wanted to later in the day to, to manage this. Uh, that's a finance staff may not agree, but Commissioner Dykstra is confident that he can deal with that, and I'm sure finance staff will hold him accountable to that in conversations to come, and I'm seeing our CFO agree. Uh, so is, are you still comfortable moving just M5 as is? Uh, and we have a seconder of Mayor Jaworski. Are there other comments on the side of Mayor Jaworski? No comments. So you, you were raising for the mic as if you were going to say something. Um, any any other discussion on on this item? Uh, seeing none, I'll uh, I'll take the vote. Uh, all those in favor? All those opposed? Councillor Freeman. So that carries, and I've made a note on Commissioner Dykstra's commitment to come back to you later in the day. Uh, so that does it for uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Bodley. Um, I'm up next. The only one I'll I'll activate it this time, uh, and I'll look for somebody else has to do that, is the $32,000 reduction to the LPAT transfer that Mr. Rapp said we could do. Uh, I would note that that uh, zeroes out the senior planner position from additional revenue that is driving the need for it, and the offset of not needing as much external help on uh, tribunal matters because we have the senior planner. So Councillor Freeman will move it. Councillor Bonagor will second it. Any commentary from people other than me on it? Um, seeing none. Uh, all those in favor, that's carried. Um, Councillor Veith, question? If I could bring up a couple of these other items as well at the bottom of your list. I don't know who's next. Yeah, I have Councillor Freeman having flagged M1, uh, and she's earlier on my list than... Uh, they didn't have anything flagged earlier. So I'll go there and then we'll go there. Um, thank you, Chair Henry. Um, M1, I just see as a really um, forward facing piece too. Right now, our firefighters are first on the scene and they're not trained to administer naloxone and all they need is the training. And we're talking about saving lives here. And I, I, think, I think this is a very insignificant amount of money for the potential lives saved. Uh, I'll, uh, moved by Councillor Freeman, M1. Is there a seconder on that item, Councillor Veith? I will look to uh, Chief Heptich to go up and just elaborate on uh, on, on this item uh, a, a little bit more. I heard from Councillor Freeman about frontline staff and the rest. I know we've had a conversation about the 20 that we already approved in the base budget and what this 10 is for. Can you just give us a sense of what it what it's all for and what the difference is between the two? Because I know it, it was really a thirty thousand dollar request that we're seeing in two parts. So can you can you talk a little bit more about? It? Certainly, Chair Henry. So for clarity, uh, this item as you're referring to is related to item S six on the council packet on page fifteen. Uh, as a, a point of clarity as well, that initial ask uh, as previously approved this afternoon was for ten thousand dollars. This next ask is for an additional 10 for a total of $20,000. And what these, this particular item or both items cover are the opportunity for firefighters to uh, deliver um, defibr defibrillation with medical oversight. We already do that particular component of the tiered response program, but to add epinephrine and naloxone to uh, our service delivery model, in which case each of the three uh, life-saving items and opportunities would be 
uh, have medical oversight as a delegated medical act, which means policy development, training, um, better patient outcomes and quality assurance when we're delivering um, a delegated medical act in the community. So just want to make sure everybody's on the page of the item uh, that's being discussed. Any further conversation on it, Mayor Jaworski? Question through the chair. Um, I, this is um, regular funding, annualized funding, not one-time funding of getting the firefighters all trained up on it. Maybe you could explain uh, what will happen in in future years with this with this investment. Thank you. So through you, Chair Henry, to Mayor Jaworski, with this investment, it is in fact ongoing funding as part of the operating budget. And it means the opportunity for annual policy development, annual training, and also to have uh, part of that funding also includes each time that we um, perform a delegated medical act, any one of the three areas, that that process, that form and, and paperwork is audited by a medical with medical oversight. And that's where the quality assurance and continuous improvement comes in, into play when you're performing a delegated medical act. There's also a medical legal aspect that we're covering um, our staff and firefighters through the training and policy development and oversight. Um, again, for that continuous improvement piece as well. Does that answer your question? Others, Councillor Bartley? Uh, through you, Chair Henry. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out how to put this into words without sounding like a jerk. Maybe it's not going to come off that way, but um, I guess I'm curious how big the uh, budget overall for medical oversight training is and why this item was moved, this portion of it was moved into the menu item because it seems to sort of touch on a on a nerve, and I, I agree with Councillor Freeman about the importance of saving lives in a lock zone, but it seems curious to me as to how this was prioritized into a menu item as opposed to the other, the, the remainder of the training budget, I guess. Certainly, so through you, Chair Henry, to Councillor Bodley. Uh, the first part of, of uh, your, your question, and you don't sound like uh, <laughs> it's, an, it's a negative approach, the, the clarity, opportunity to provide clarity is welcomed. So the first part is we do have a training budget. This is a new initiative and impact that would uh, be part of our budget that requires um, external training and oversight as stated. Um, as I shared previously, uh, this is tied to item S6 on page 15 of the council packet. What we were looking for in the opportunity to balance the budget, even though, of co and of course, it is a life safety initiative, uh, our approach uh, does fit in to a corporate approach to balance the budget and, and bring that back to council. So the first ask under uh, S6 uh, would mean that we would train um, a certain amount of staff, that being our firefighters and get them moving on each of these areas and the, and the training program in place. And then this has arrived in an additional ask, uh, if council wishes to advance it, that we would be able to train all staff in the same way at one time in 2019. Should council elect to not approve this particular item, we would uh, look to return in 2020 uh, for that ongoing funding and get the remainder of staff trained in that in this particular area. Um, uh, thank you for that. And so maybe uh, for, for my perspective, what's, what's the difference between firefighters and all staff in terms of the, the likelihood of somebody in that all staff bucket arriving at, at, at the scene without a firefighter who is already trained? And if, I don't know if that makes sense. I, b I believe it does. Through you, Chair Henry, to Councilor Baudelet. Uh What I'm talking about is, is the, when I talk about all firefighters, I'm talking about really the rank. So we would start with training all staff, uh, at, sorry, all firefighters in 2019 as approved. And then with this additional funding, if approved, it would mean we would train all staff from platoon chiefs down to our, our captains and potentially acting captains. Our approach, um, always is with equipment that each staff member, regardless of their rank, receives training uh, to operate all equipment and um, any tools and equipment, and in this case, Delegated Medical Act, because they could be required to perform such acts accordingly, either for the public, and in particular with naloxone, well, uh, it could be that we have exposed firefighters, in which case we would like to have everyone trained to perform that um, for a full system approach. 
Uh, I have Councillor Bonagore, if you're concluded, Councillor Bonagore. Yeah. yeah. Again, just going to seek some clarity from you, Chief Heptich. Um, so S6 would provide training for front, essentially frontline, the, you know, the, the, the fire officers who would show up to a call. Um, it, and is S6, that is ongoing funding, correct? Correct. So is it annual training or would next year this funding would be there for the rest of the staff? Through you, Councillor Henry, or sorry, Chair Henry to Councillor Bonnegar, we would be conducting annual training on this particular piece. And this is also aligned with emergency medical responder training where we have a, a foundation to, uh, to deliver these particular items to the public. And we conduct annual training, including annual recertification and so forth for our staff. Um, something this significant as a delegated medical act requires that strong oversight um, there's a bit of a, an approach or phrase that we use is that it's the right patient, right medication at the right time for the right reasons. And there has to be a strong assessment piece. There has to be a strong base, basis of uh, anatomy and physiology to understanding what are the implications, what are the contraindications. I don't want to go too deep with you, but when you're talking about administering a drug or such an act to, to humans, our staff have to have annual training and certification. So, so it's not a case of you know, the frontline five responders would be trained this year and then they wouldn't be trained next year. So there's capacity in the budget. It's a case of every, you're hoping to make sure everyone is trained every year. That's correct. Okay. And we would come back on an annual basis as research advances, as there's changes um, to patient outcome studies, trials, and so forth. I guess the easiest example I have for you is that uh, a person would take a CPR course, a lay person or a professional, but it requires annual certification to maintain that basic life support skill uh, these are referred to as advanced life support skills. And again, they align with that same approach and atten um, attention to detail and uh, training. You're welcome. Okay. Lots of robust information on you know, emerging and challenging areas in, uh, in emergency service response uh, duties uh, as, as they come. Uh, seeing no further conversation, it has been moved and seconded. Uh, all those in favor? That's everyone. Okay. Councillor Veith, you had items you wish to raise? Yes, through you, Chair Henry. Um, uh, M4 and M6, but can we start with M6? Sure. <laughs> um, so the museum strategy was done in 2015. So, um, I just hate it when we do studies and don't implement them. They sit on the shelf year after year, and then they finally come up in the form of roundabouts on streets. So um, I think I think we should we should approve this, or this should be something that we should consider is to to finish that work that the strategy. Um, came up with uh, for programming, for community branding, for because it's the 10th anniversary of our museum. And uh, I don't know, I think it's a really important uh, project. I don't know, is there any? So I hear that. Move that. If moved I by <laughs> Councillor Veith and seconded by Mayor Jaworski. Um, I will look to Mr. Bowman as it's his uh, area to speak to uh, M6 and, and those items raised by Councillor Veith, and then we'll get it going. Certainly through you, um, Councillor Henry. Uh, Councillor Veith is correct. This is the 10th anniversary of our location at the Conestoga Mall. And uh, during that past 10 years, the museum has um, enhanced their, uh, their position in the community, along with the fact that they've got standards now. We can apply for more grants. They are a recognized museum across the province of Ontario. And during the time we did a museum strategy, we wanted to sort of get a sense where we wanted to go with this. 
uh, with this particular project, and programming and exhibits were on high on the list. So what, we ha what you have before you this, this evening is um, a request for $30,000 to begin enhanced uh, programming, maybe to our schools, to our senior groups, to uh, begin to bring the strategy more to life than what it is today. Um, exhibits currently are, are costing us more money to bring in. Uh, we're having a increase in our visitor traffic. I think I mentioned this a, week, a few weeks back. In 2017, we had 5,500 visitors to our site at the Consulco Mall. In 2018, we had over seven, almost 7,500. And we're, we're going out of the community more frequently, uh, trying to uh, promote and enhance um, our community based on its heritage and based on the, uh, the work that our museum staff are doing. So the 30,000 would be a, a general asset to begin more programming opportunities and to increase more exhibits to get more foot traffic up there. Does that, does that help? Does that thank you, thank you. that's very helpful. I just, I always feel like we have a great asset out there and great staff, but always running on a shoestring budget. And I just kind of feel like it's time. And $30,000 I don't think is a, a huge uh, expense to, uh, to promote our heritage, basically. Next up, I have Councillor Bodley. Uh, I don't. I don't necessarily. Sorry, through you, Chair Henry. I don't necessarily want to conflate two things, but I'm. I'm going to. I think, anyways. Uh, um, the, just because the numbers are so uh, equivalent, the thirty thousand dollars in M six and the thirty thousand dollars, thirty ish thousand dollars in M eight. When we when we approved M eight, and I, I agree, thirty thousand dollars in a bubble is not a significant uh, amount versus our budget, but thirty thousand dollars five, six, seven times certainly is. Um, when we look at M eight, M eight, we're talk as as Mayor Jaworski said, we're talking about putting thirty thousand dollars back into the community. That's kind of how I see this initiative as well, too. It's just that this is a city initiative uh, as opposed to an external initiative, which we see in M eight. So, from from my perspective, I agree. Dry, uh, we have this asset in the museum and uh, trying to get out into the community more and bring more awareness to to this asset. I think is important. Um, and uh, I guess I have a hard time supporting both M6 and M8, but if we were, if there was a discussion around uh, potentially bringing M6 in as opposed to M8, I might be more interested in engaging in that conversation, although I don't know whether or not that's something that could be done tactically at this point. <laughs> I think these are among the reasons I'd hope we'd get all the items flagged at the beginning so we could have the holistic discussion. But these things evolve and we roll with what we've done. Um, that would be a reconsideration motion at this point, which is a not insignificant enterprise because we try to avoid that. Um, it's generally not helpful in the same meeting. Um, but it, it's, it's a fair point. Um, uh, other comments on this item? Mayor Jaworski? Well, I would echo Councillor Vee's uh, comment. I was thinking about the shoestring budget and then the words literally came out of your mouth. And that's, uh, that's something that, uh, you know, each and every year we retool the grade five council for a day contest of where we're, we're visiting. And last year we added the city museum to the visit list. And I can tell you from the, 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 the grade fives who had never been there, they all ranked it very high, if not their highest uh, favorite thing to do for the day. And it's really, uh, it's, it's, it's a shame that we can't build the audience and build the, uh, uh, the visits to our museum because of the, uh, the size of the budget. So uh, notwithstanding the fact that, uh, I have stopped using that word. It's not a good word anymore. Um, that uh, you know that uh, besides the point of the fact that we've uh, funded the community cash grants, uh, certainly this is another uh, good investment in our community uh, that literally is uh, front facing to citizens. It's not putting it directly into their hands, but it's certainly putting programs out there direct for them uh, uh, and expanding the capacity of our museum. So I, I would, uh, I'll, I'll be supporting this. Look to other comments on this item. I think uh, I, I appreciate the uh, uh, the request, and I know I went uh, back and forth a little bit last month with uh, with Mr. Bowman to to understand some of uh, and, and Ms. Vanderbrink uh, to understand where uh, where this would would help. Um, I, I take Councillor Bodley's uh, point of view that. Um, that each small addition starts to add up to significant uh, amounts of money and modifying the, 
the general statement of that because it's all real money, uh, but it's, uh, uh, it, it does add up in, in a way that can be unhelpful. Uh, and uh, uh, so in, in general, for how much we fund and how fast we fund the museum strategy, my preference uh, would be that we look to our, our strategic plan as a council to identify where we want to focus our efforts uh, on, on some of those. Uh, where the pressure isn't you know, growing and acute as some of the other ones that we've, we've funded today. Um, but if there, were, um, uh, if, if there were specific things to celebrate this year as the 10th anniversary that are one time in nature, I would welcome seeing a future report to this council using council's uh, community priority and contingency reserve to deal with those one time 10th anniversary celebration expenses outside of today's cycle, because I, I don't think it's all of the 30,000. Uh, and I think that would be a reasonable way for us to, to deal with that. And if the next budget shows some space to, uh, to continue to advance the strategy, in effect, it would be a bridge uh, towards doing that. Uh, which is what Mr. Anderson was suggesting on a prior item. There's some ways to deal with one time to get us to where we're going. So that would be my preference for how we would deal with this, but Council could certainly fund it today. Uh, so seeing no further commentary, I'll take the vote on M6. All those in favor? Uh, all those opposed? That would be Councillor Freeman, Councillor Bodley, Councillor Bonagor. Uh, so that item fails. But I, I, I take it there'd probably be some support for what I raised, and there'd be at least one more hand up uh, to, uh, uh, to get that done, uh, if that came back. Um, so M4. Um, thank you, Chair Henry. Um, yeah, so we, we have a neighborhood strategy that we're implementing. Uh, this position is already, we're all, we already have that person on contract, correct? We have, through you, Councillor Henry, we have the person in place through cap, some capital dollars for, for 18 months, starting last August. Okay. So September, fair me. September. Okay, so that person has a little more time. Um, anyway, I just, I kind of think that here we've spent all this time, got all this community input to a neighborhood strategy, and I have high hopes for that strategy in my neighborhood, and I'm sure other councillors do too. <laughs> um, so anyway, I, I'm, I'd like to move that we can, that we move this one forward. Um, if someone cares to second that. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Awesome. Okay, Councillor Vasek seconds. Uh, so open to the floor for discussion, Mayor Jaworski. Thank you. Question to uh, staff. Um, uh, so what will happen after 18 months? This is something that obviously uh, uh, certainly last term, of last term of council wanted to move forward on, the neighborhood strategy. Um, what will happen 18 months from now? This is, a, this is going to be a permanent ask, I would think. That, yes, uh, this is not, you know, turned down today and it's going away. This is something that we need to do. Could you give me more? We, we have a number of, through your council, Henry, we have a number of initiatives we've already begun to pursue that we consider like low-hanging fruit. Um, the neighborhood matching fund review is one of those examples. We also have um, begun uh, interaction with the school boards to get better access to the schools to, in our neighborhoods. And that's been the work that this, this position has in, um, uh, developed in the past uh, three or four months. We've also um, had the review of, of the micro grants as well, and working on that. We have new initiatives coming forward. One is a website portal. Uh, some of the other, th today you also approved, uh, I think it was $40,000 for the neighborhood strategy. Those are other initiatives, uh, um, neighborhood summit, uh, a leaders committee that we want to develop to enhance our neighborhoods going forward. Uh, this particular person uh, will continue that role until we have um, fulfilled the, the capacity for it. We're at council this evening uh, to advance that as a permanent uh, position because we see this as an ongoing uh, work that's required. Each day out, we find different uh, elements within our community and our neighborhoods, and we believe that through this, this development, we're building a stronger community. Thank you, Mr. Bowman. Um, uh, I have Councillor Bonagor and Councillor Bodley. Uh, through you, Chair Henry, this may just be a process question, but you said this um, this position's in place now, 
and it was an 18 months, so that would take us through to the end of the year. I'm just curious why, and this is just me being new to budgeting, why is it listed for this year then and not for next year if this position is already funded this year? Or am I misunderstanding the situation? Through, through you, we felt that having it now would enable the individual to continue their work and to develop all the recommendations going forward, as opposed to having a stop perhaps, perhaps at the end of this year. So our next budget conversation will be for 2022. And then, of course, that would mean a time frame in which that person will not be, potentially not be working in the, in the position. So we wanted to make sure that we had in place um, the recommendations going forward on a consistent basis. So it's fair to say that it's not uncommon for uh, the city uh, to fund through one-time sources, usually a capital project item, uh, a position to get it going and off the ground before we get to a budget cycle to, to approve it. In this case, the budget cycle would be 2020. Uh, where it would come forward as a, as a staff position to keep going. Um, but uh, if it were approved now, uh, there may be some HR things we'd have to do to facilitate the difference between a contract and an ongoing uh, position. I, I assume there's something in there that council shouldn't have to care about. Uh, and uh, But that would mean that the capital budget item that was funding it for this year would not need to fund it uh, once that happened. And that money would, by policy, uh, either be returned into those uh, capital reserve items or be because there are maybe a number of items associated with that capital project, it could continue to do some work using the budget that's left. So it depends on the individual item. I would note that M3, the asset manager, data management uh, analyst, and M9, the asset management analyst, are also contract positions that are being funded out of reserves uh, right now, but are going to come forward in a subsequent budget process. And one of the items that we had in the budget we'd already approved today was also a contract uh, position for the manager that now will not need you know, that ongoing uh, capital funding because it made it in, if, if that makes sense. Commissioner Dykstra had... Uh, yeah, just through you, Chair Hendry, just want to confirm what Chair Hendry has said. It uh, solidifies or... Uh, maintains that momentum with the current position and the work that's doing by advancing the position now and the give back uh, would go to back to the capital source. So I wanted to confirm that and that was the strategy behind that. Always good questions. It's, there are many ways to navigate the annual budget process and ongoing pressures, right? Uh, Councillor Bodley. Uh, through you, Chair Henry. So um, uh, again, not I'm going to conflate two things here again because we're about to talk about M2, as I see highlighted there. Um, and um, I, I agree with staff that I think M2 is a little bit of a higher priority than M4, particularly given some of the budget pressures that uh, we're seeing continually in fleet and uh, the infrastructure pressures that we're seeing broadly. Um, and uh, personally, I'm, I think I'm satisfied with the way that it's being funded currently. Um, and I'm trying to keep an eye on that uh, little gray box in the top corner, G5 there, vis-a-vis uh, -vis some of our municipal indicators uh, around, uh, around the region. So um, I, I definitely see the value in the neighborhood development coordinator and the neighborhood strategy, and I think it's exceptionally important. And we have two very active uh, and strong neighborhood associations in my ward, and I hope there will be at least one more. Uh, but uh, I, I, on, an, on my end, I'm, I would be leaning more towards M2 than M4, and I just wanted to put that out there as we're having these conversations. Uh, Councillor Freeman. Uh, through you, Chair Henry. I just I wanted to build on what Councillor Bodley said. I, I agree. I like the way that it's being funded for this year. Um, I have no problems telegraphing to staff that I expect to see this position in the budget next year, and I don't care what you have to take out, but this is not going anywhere. And so I don't want to fund it at this time, but it is my expectation that it will be in the budget as a permanent line item, as an ongoing piece. Um, and, and, you know, if again, getting back to prioritization, I appreciate the conversation we had on the last item with regard to the museum, but I see this as just such a critically more important item. And if I have to make tough choices, um, I, I want to stay focused on some really high 
pieces and this is it. This is the biggest strategy that I think we've written in the last few years. And um, um, so, and I, and I totally agree with the, the G5 column and I'm, I'm struggling with it going any higher. Councilor Vasek. Okay, I'm, not, I'm just trying to make sense of the conversation uh, through you, Chair. Um, I, I, so if we decide that we're not going to approve M4 through these menu items, the neighborhood coordinator position will remain funded just differently. There may be a slight gap in time period where the position wouldn't, there would be no position? Through you, because we would review the importance of this position has been identified, no question. We would review ways to fund this to get us through to the next budget cycle. As per Councillor Freeman's suggestion, we will take direction based on the outcome of the vote. And if it means it goes to the next, the next um, budget, we will pursue that. We, we won't, it won't evaporate. Always good to validate, and I, I would I would say on Councillor Freeman's comment that unless we did something wonky uh, and approved a strategic plan that said, "Dear God, we hate neighborhoods. We don't like that." Uh, <laughs> I, I think the idea that it's a strong priority of council has been well telegraphed uh, the last council as well, and the strategy uh, and the community through uh, through all of those. So. It would take, I think, a significant shift of this council expressed in that kind of document to signal to staff otherwise uh, than, uh, than what Councillor Freeman has raised, uh, which is council's prerogative. I just don't expect that would go anywhere. Uh, so I don't have any other speakers on this item. It was moved and seconded. Uh, so I'll take a vote. All those in favor? Councillor Veith, all those opposed? Councillor... Bonagora, Bodley, Freeman, Vasek, and Jaworski. Okay, there were no other specific items, that, notwithstanding Commissioner Dykstra's promise, which I, I will latch on to before we uh, exit here. Uh, I had raised M2. Uh, if a member of council wishes at this time to move uh, M2, uh, we can do that. Uh, Councillor Bodley would like to do so. Is there a seconder for doing so? Uh, Councillor Vasek and Councillor Bodley, do you want to speak to why you are raising it? Sorry, through you, uh, through you, Chair Henry. Um, I guess it's just uh, there's a couple of things. First of all, it's it's the the most it's the highest priority item of of significance uh, uh, as identified by staff. Uh, we've seen through business plans and through this process a lot of the pressures that have been uh, in place uh, in uh, fleet, uh, broadly speaking. Um, perhaps a lack of efficiency that's going on, um, as it uh, notes in the menu paper, providing more wrench in time uh, to mechanics, increasing productivity. Uh, I think uh, these are all... Uh, noble things we should be aspiring to do. And I think sometimes when we look at something like fleet, which isn't forward facing to the to the public, uh, it gets lost. And I, I fear that what we see with uh, uh, the budget pressures that the fleet department have faced in general, I just I sort of see a connection between these between these two items. I'm not suggesting that fleet per our business plan discussions, I'm not suggesting that they could necessarily activate any uh, reduction um, in their in their budget broadly, but uh, I, I I think we may find that if we hire this person, that uh, it it may well lead to better outcomes broadly speaking. So I would I would like to move it. We have a mover and seconder. Then uh, I'll look to uh, staff to provide further commentary uh, on uh, on M two. Uh, Tracy, thank you, Chair Henry. Um, Yes, I feel strongly for this position. I think it would, to your point, uh, create efficiencies as soon as the recruitment is completed. So our fleet te technicians are currently spending a lot of their time sourcing and purchasing the parts that we need, the non-routine parts. And having this position would, um, would equate to almost one FTE fleet technician. And that would allow us to enhance our preventive maintenance um, 
that we undertake right now, we're only looking after prevent preventative maintenance for our commercial vehicles and not for our other routine vehicles. So we're doing what we're legislated to do, but it's not allowing us time to have a robust preventative maintenance program. In addition, there is um, to try and keep up with demand, especially during winter control, so that we don't have vehicles not in service. Sometimes we have to have overtime or we have to outsource to have external uh, suppliers do the repairs and that, that costs additional having the equivalent of one FTE fleet technician would help alleviate that. And uh, Ms. Patel. Through you, Chair Henry, um, to Councillor Bodley, thank you for bringing this forward. And I also wanted to point out that we had a fleet review done um, last year by one of the leading firms, Mercury Associates, that has done the review even for the region of Waterloo, and this is one of their recommendations also. Um, they have identified various areas where we do need to improve the data gathering, um, data decision making um, that we do based on data. And one of the key points was that um, we needed more wrench time. And the, the point that they made is that it's easily addressed if you stop the mechanics from having to order very specialized parts. So much that we have a stock room, the vehicles that we have are very different and, and they require highly high level of knowledge with respect to those vehicles to be able to order the parts. And their suggestion was that the mechanics are at a higher rate, get a part specialist at a lower rate, you will free up a lot more mechanic mechanics time, wrench time, you'll be able to do preventive maintenance as Tracy Bell has said. So um, much though this is a position that is um, in the back of the house so-called, but the impact is absolutely felt in the front line when it's the winter control equipment that has to be serviced and the vehicles have to be on the road. Uh, that's where the impact is going to be felt very quickly. Thank you. I have uh, Mayor Jaworski, I believe, who wished to speak on this next. Then I'll look around the horseshoe again. Well, I think um, although the position isn't front-facing, I think tomorrow morning with the winter storm watch tonight, it is a front-facing uh, person who helps get our fleet, uh, keeps our fleet uh, moving. I know in talking to Mr. Rapp uh, a couple weeks ago, at one point I think we had Four of, four of our key pieces of equipment were down, and so having more time for our mechanics to focus on getting those vehicles out and serving the community is a good thing. Looking to other speakers on this item. Councillor Freeman. Um, I guess the only other thing that had come to mind when I first looked at, at this, in addition to what you've already said, can we track these savings? Can we get a sense of like how, how, whether or not this position, I guess what I'm thinking is that if I fund this this year, I'm going to see a savings in some other budget lines next year. And so if we could track that, um, like you said that they wouldn't have to buy as many specialized parts, for example, or they may still need to buy the specialized parts, but they wouldn't be the ones placing the orders for the specialized parts. But we would be able to look at tracking on what's currently outsourced that we've been able to. Right. That, and then yeah. some of the other savings would be we could report on how much additional preventative maintenance we've been able to undertake. Well, and, and maybe, it's as, it, maybe it's as simple as this is the increased wrench time. I want to see that it yeah. actually happened. And secondly, that the amount of time the vehicles were not on the road compared to this year fundamentally changed. And it would be based on, we would have to, if you approve it this year, obviously there'd be a recruitment. So it would be based on the, the time we have someone in place. I, I mean, always good commentary here. Uh, other comments on this item? Uh, seeing seeing none, I'll add uh, uh, my thoughts. I mean, I, I'd, I'd raised uh, this one as one of my menu items initially. Um, uh, like some have identified around the table, we're looking at the gray box and have numbers in mind. And when, when council approved uh, M5, that made a significant move towards there. So I was no longer uh, feeling as confident about raising M2 myself if it was me doing it. Um, because I, I was seeing some of the trade-offs. But the will of council is the important will on, on how this works. So uh, Councillor Bodley wished to, to raise this item. That's good. Uh, and we can have the, the conversation. Uh, I see this as a, as a position that we know is necessary. Um, and what we gain from it is more effective uh, and, and considerate you know, 
supply chain management of, of what we've got on, on the various parts. That's an, that's an efficiency that isn't always measured in dollars, but is certainly measured in, uh, in, in, in time and reliability. It is a service uh, uh, enhancement or a service support uh, in terms of providing that frontline service, as Mayor Jaworski has, has mentioned. Uh, uh, it's not just uh, you know, wrench time for folks, but it's the result of that wrench time, which keeps more vehicles on the road, which means our, our citizens get the service that we try to provide them better uh, out, of, uh, out of our fleet uh, in, a, in a way that works. And we get the equivalent of an FTE of a preventive maintenance program, uh, which is an infrastructure deficit item. We've talked a lot about the 14 to $17 million tax base gap on an annual, uh, on an annual basis uh, from a capital uh, perspective. What we haven't talked as much about is how much we're investing in maintenance programs and that those are often squeezed and those drive those capital numbers. And there's a certain amount of savings uh, on the infrastructure capital portion. It's difficult to quantify, but that we can realize over time if we do the work up front. Uh, the only way we'll have a good sense of what that number is is by starting to do it and, and seeing some of those some of those tracking to help us that should lower slightly the capital budget needs on a, on a long-term basis. Um, we just won't know in year one what that, what that lowering will be. So I think this is a down payment on infrastructure. It's a commitment to uh, strong service delivery uh, and it allows uh, our staff to do what they're really good at and not, uh, not other people's stuff that if they were really good at it, it would be done a lot better. Uh, and, and so it, it really hits uh, a number of different important buckets and then we're going to have to talk about offsets to get to to get to that number in due course. Uh, Councilor Bartley? Sorry, uh, through you, Chair Henry. Just, I, I wonder, since we've had a lot of uh, conversation here about Box G5, uh, I wonder if uh, before having the vote on this, if we can see what uh, activating uh, or approving M2 and possibly the negative forty thousand dollars. What that would do to G five, given that this is the last thing that we're that we're talking about, if that would be prudent, I'd. I think that's certainly prudent. So, um, I'll give uh, Brad a moment to put in the forty down and the other up, and uh, and we'll see what that does. <laughs> the Dijkstra dip. We can we can call that other item. <laughs> And sorry, one last thing. Since since our, our friends just to the south of us are uh, calculating their tax levy to the hundredth percent, if we could extend that box by a decimal point, that'd be great. How about 17 decimal points, Brett? Uh, does that help? Okay. So with that, is there any further conversation about uh, the item before us, which is M2? Seeing none, I'll take the vote on that. Uh, all those in favor? That's everyone. Uh, and now, um, let me ask the, uh, uh, we'll go down to the Dijkstra dip. This is my branding exercise uh, right now. Uh, uh, so uh, I, I would like, uh, uh, on behalf of finance staff, I would like Commissioner Dijkstra uh, again to, uh, to identify what this, uh, what this might be. And then I will look to council to see if the number that they saw earlier is a sufficient enough number for them or if we want to have a different conversation about what the final number looks like. So Commissioner Dexter. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, thank you, council. Through you, Chair Henry to council. The, uh, the, the link between energy consumption is really the uh, opportunity here. So with the mechanical uh, engineer being activated, We'll, we can see that. So I think the, the title versus the Dijkstra dip can be a, a savings on uh, energy consumption is where we would see those uh, realized savings to, to help uh, bring uh, that value forward for Council. 
And I, I appreciate that on the fly thinking. I think it's a good starting point for the for the label, but I think it would be reasonable as well for council to look for a, uh, an, an information item back just to staff clarify after the day uh, where, where they anticipate those are. It may be more than just that one item that may, uh, in the light of day, require a couple of other places to, uh, to, to, pull, that, uh, to pull that from. Um, so let me ask uh, council uh, if there uh, is a demand for uh, whether or not additional dollars may be uh, necessary uh, to get a budget uh, a budget vote, or, or whether, uh, and, and then we can take it from from there. Let me look around the appetite of the horseshoe based on what you saw beforehand, because I heard from finance staff they want one motion to reduce, not multiple motions. Okay, we're good. All right. So I'll look for. Um, move that item. I'll look for Councillor Bodley, since the mechanic uh, uh, item was his item, to move the now renamed from Dykstra Dip uh, the energy cons uh, consumption savings. If you're fair, by moving that, I'll look for a seconder on, on that item. Councillor Bonnegar, any discussion of that? Seeing none, I'll take the vote. All those in favor? That's everyone, so that's carried. And I see, uh, I see no further um, business under the uh, property tax uh, number. And that's what, uh, that's what we will see when we get to the end of the day. I have heard from clerks that it would be very helpful if, that, if we took a two minute break that became five uh, at this stage. Um, and so we will take that now and return to the enterprise side, which I hope we can proceed through in an expedited manner since we've kind of approved all the enterprise stuff. <laughs>